Welcome Classic Rock fans to an episode of Beneath the Covers and today we're looking at uh, Cheap Thrills by Big Brother and the Holden Company. This album is one of those that's um, indelibly linked with that 1960s counterculture, a bit like White Rabbit and Timothy Leary, Scott McKenzie. This album comes just after their seismic, and I mean seismic, performance at the Monterey Pop Festival, the, the performance that actually uh, secured them a, a signing at uh, Columbia Records. But this album is fascinating, the way it incorporates uh, audience noises. Think of the impression of a live album. Kiss did the same thing in 1975, I believe. But this is not a live album, apart from Ball and Chain. But this wonderful sleeve was actually drawn by cartoonist Robert Crumb, who is much beloved of the, of hippies everywhere. Um, the original idea for the album sleeve was supposed to be the band naked in bed together, uh, taking a kind of a grey slick approach to into band relations. But of course that was vetoed by uh, Columbia, as well as the working title of the album. They actually wanted to call it Cheap Thrills, um, Sex Dope and Cheap Thrills. Uh, but that was never going to fly either, was it? Now, Crumb's famous artwork was supposed to appear on the back of the album cover, and the front cover was supposed to be a portrait or picture of Janis Joplin, but they performed a kind of switcheroo. Now, Janis Joplin was a big fan of cartoons and a big fan of Robert Crumb, um, but I think when she saw the artwork, she was so thrilled with it, she decided it had to go on the front cover, so maybe she's to blame for that. Interestingly, later on, Crumb actually authorised um, the sale of prints of that album cover personally signed by him. If you've got one of those, I bet that's worth a pretty penny. On one of the earlier versions of the album, I think in a speech bubble, one of the characters you can read, Harry Kirshner de Getz. Um, it's actually in the word balloon of the turbaned chap on the on the sleeve. I think this was eventually uh, airbrushed out or, or smudged out uh, with the words by Art by R. Crumb replaced that. But interesting, we think about the story of uh, Robert Crumb in San Francisco. He actually moved to San Francisco in 1967. And this, uh, he spent two years traveling and experimenting with LSD. He was a big fan of all that, but he wasn't such a big fan of the hippie counterculture and their music, which he saw as uh, uh, disgustingly middle class. But it was at this time that he famously published Fritz the Cat in numerous magazines, as well as, as, well as other characters, characters like uh, uh, the mystic guru, Mr. Natural, uh, the sex craze, Mr. Snoyd, and uh, last but not least, Snoyd's favourite companion, Angel Food McSpade, uh, which is um, racially very inappropriate in this day and age. But Crumb was happy to immerse himself in that carefree culture of San Francisco at the time. In fact, he described the city as a, a sweet little cupcake with Victorian houses and pretty parks. But this environment enabled him to indulge in the things that he generally loved, i.e. comics, LSD and sex. Sounds like a great weekend. Interestingly, Crumb described the whole LSD experience in very biblical terms as, uh, as the road to Damascus for the hippies, something religious and visionary. And I think it's fair to say his drawing style certainly appealed to that, uh, the lysergic vision of, uh, of the uh, youth culture at the time. The publication of Zap magazine, which Crumb himself would sell on street corners for I think about 25 cents a pop, garnered him a certain underground reputation and certainly got his face known amongst the hippies, including Janis Joplin. Uh, he said his drawings appealed to a, a certain um, a certain demographic. To my comics appeal to hard drinking, hard fucking end of the hippie spectrum rather than the spiritual eastern religious lighter than air types. As I said he had no love for the, the music that surrounded San Francisco at the time. Uh, to quote Crumb again, he said, I had no patience for any of that psychedelic pop music or crap that came in the 1960s. The Grateful Dead, Jim Morrison, The Doors, Beatles, Bob Dylan. I had little or no interest in any of that. As I said, I think he saw the whole counterculture as something rather bogus, something that was embraced by middle-class children. Um, it's a quote I often cite when I talk about the 60s, is that, is that one from Pete Townsend, where he describes the, the whole subculture as something that uh, uh, drawn from a youthful idealism and drug fueled hope. But there was an unwavering respect between Crumb and Janis Joplin. He saw her as uh, singing the blues, uh, a form of music that he genuinely loved. Not sure he particularly enjoyed the impressionistic psychedelic blues of the Big Brother Holden Company or the Jimi Hendrix experience, anything like that. 
but he had a lot of respect for Janis Joplin and her vocal prowess. In fact, he described her voice as exceptional. Uh, he said she started out singing old time blues like Bessie Smith. She was kind of a folk nick originally until she became somewhat embroiled with the rather talentless Big Brother Holding Company. But Crumb was not the first choice of artist for this album. As I said, uh, Big Brother and the Holding Company had performed fantastically at the Monterey Pop Festival, which really uh, propelled them into the uh, the consciousness, the public consciousness, and Columbia Records had quite rightly snaffled them up. I think one of the artists considered for the album cover was Richard Avedon, or Avedon, who was quite famous at the time and rather expensive. He actually took a band photograph and then swapped their faces around. A rather, in, a rather expensive experiment, which they uh, in the end didn't use. Apparently the drummer Dave Getz, who also suggests to the band that they use Crumb for a, a, an album sleeve. Uh, Crumb got paid $600 for his artwork. And I think he did it primarily due to his, uh, due to his respect for Janis Joplin. Dave Getz goes on to say that Robert Crumb wasn't into our music. Uh, in fact, uh, Robert Crumb says that uh, says of Janis Joplin, she was a swell gal and a very talented singer. Then she got together with those idiots. Their main problem with Big Brother was they were amateur musicians trying to play psychedelic rock and be heavy. And you listen to it now, and it's bad, just embarrassing. Crumb's original idea was a cartoon um, uh, performing on the stage with the band's faces kind of pasted on it. Um, but the band was less than overwhelmed by this. But it was when Crumb delivered the artwork for the rear of the sleeve that they were so impressed that they had to make that the front cover. That wonderful comic strip with each panel for a different song. And of course it's that artwork that has cemented this album, helped to cement this album's iconic status. When Big Brother and the Holding Company played the Fillmore East in the uh, autumn of 1968, they actually announced on stage that uh, their album cover was the work of R. Crumb and they received a huge standing ovation. Uh, um, such was the love for uh, Robert Crumb amongst the, the hippie types and the counterculture. This album peaked and topped the album charts in 1968 and was rubbing shoulders with some pretty seismic works. Um, works like um, Electric Ladyland by the Jimi Hendrix Experience, Crown of Creation by the Jefferson Airplane, the Time Has Come by the Chambers Brothers, Arthur Brown's The Crazy World of Arthur Brown, not to mention Cream's Wheels of Fire. There is no doubt that this is the golden age of psychedelic music, uh, exemplified by not only this album, but the albums I've just listed. And Crumb was definitely a part of it, physically, if not mentally. Anyway, you've been watching a particularly psychedelic episode of Beneath the Covers. If you haven't done so already, I do urge you to click like, subscribe and check that bell so you get notified of uh, any future content. Other than that, I will leave you with my closing salvo, which as you know is hope you're well, you're staying safe, but more importantly, of course, is that you keep listening.